So last time we managed to call a remote API, get some data, and display it on the screen. And that's great. And you might have noticed here in appcontent.js, right here on line 19, I'm using something that is remarkably familiar to anyone who's worked in JavaScript for a while, and that is the document get element by ID. And I'm getting the element post list by ID. And while that works for this case, and it's fine for the examples that I'm doing right now, Typically, in a React application, rarely will you see anyone using document.getElementById or referring to an element in the DOM by ID or by name or by class, and there's a reason for that. And that's because React has its own life cycle, and elements appear and disappear in the DOM without you really knowing when that's happening, because it all happens asynchronously. So in this example, where I have app content, and it's my main component being displayed and it never disappears, that works just fine. But you should be aware of something known as refs. And this is React's version of get element by ID, for example. So let's just change this and not have an ID on post list here. And I'll do it just for this lecture. And let's use a ref instead. So refs work in component classes. And the way that they work is like this. Right at the top, I'm going to use the constructor method. Constructor. In React, constructor always takes the argument props. You can call it whatever you want, but typically it's called props. And the very first thing you must do every time you call a constructor in a React component is this, super props. Otherwise, nothing's going to work. And the next thing I'll do is create a reference. And what I'm going to create a reference to is my UL. And you do it like this, this dot, and I'll call mine list ref, because I'm referencing a list. And that's going to be equal to react dot create ref. So now that that's available to me in my code. And of course, I need to put that somewhere. So way down here, where I have ID equals post list, I'll leave that there, even though I'm not going to use it, is I will say ref equals, and then in curly brackets, this dot list ref. Now, I have a means of getting this DOM element, this UL, in React without relying upon ID. And I'll talk about why using ID is a bit of a problem a bit later on. So back up here, the only change I need to make at this point is on line 24 in my code. Posts is no longer a document get element by ID. Instead, I go like this, const posts equals this dot list ref and it's not just this dot list ref. I have to add this keyword after it, dot current. Nothing else changes. So when I go back now to my web browser and click this button, it still works exactly as we would expect. Now, the reason you don't use ID in a React Act is because the basic principle behind React and one of its great strengths is you have reusable components. Now, right now, this component app content.js only exists once. But what if I, this component was instead, say, a text input for a form? And I have a form I'm building, and I use a text input component five times in that form. If I had something like this, ID on my text input, and I use it five times, suddenly I have five elements on my form that all have the same ID. And that's really not a good thing. Of course, ID must be unique for the current web page being displayed. And if I have five elements with the same ID, well, bad things are going to happen. And refs gives us a way of getting around this. Now, the fact that you have access to the virtual DOM, to React's virtual DOM using refs, and that they behave very much like IDs do in standard HTML and JavaScript, it might give you some encouragement to use them all over the place. And in fact, if you look at the React documentation for refs, they say this, your first inclination may be to use refs to make things happen in your application. If this is the case, take a moment and think more critically about where state should be owned in the component hierarchy. Now, we haven't talked about state yet, but we're going to momentarily. The point is, use these sparingly. Uh, there's almost always a better way to manage the things that you want to take place in your application rather than using refs. But instead of using ID, whenever possible, and it's almost always possible, use a reference instead. So this is just a quick introduction to them. I will tell you right now, I am not going to be using refs very much in this course at all 
because I don't want to encourage you to use a shortcut to try to make things happen. Because you, overuse of refs will almost certainly result in problems in your application as it grows in complexity. And the easiest way to avoid problems is to not use refs unless it's absolutely critical that you do so. All right, so let's move on.